Hi, in this video, we shall be discussing on principal values and the addition angle formula, which is a part of this bigger topic on trigonometry. In part A of this question, without the use of a calculator, express the principal value of cosine inverse of negative root 3 over 2 in radians as a multiple of pi. And that is a one mark question. In a separate part B questions, without using a calculator, express cosine 7 pi over 12 in the form of root A minus root B divided by C, where A, B, and C are integers. And that is a two marks question. In another part C question, angles A and B both lie in between 0 and 360 degrees. Given that sine A and cosine B are both negative, explains whether you agree or disagree that the sum of A and B is in the range of 360 to 540 degrees, not inclusive. And that is a two marks question. And in the last part, part D. The diagram shows a triangle XYZ of height HCM YW is 3CM, WZ is 2CM. Angle XWZ is a 90 degrees. Angles A and B are such that A plus B is 45 degrees. You are to find the value of H. And that is a 4 marks question. Now, you might want to pause this video to give this question a try. When you are ready, keep watching. In part A of this question, we need to find the principal value of a cosine function. So by principal values of a cosine function, we have this. Principal value of cosine inverse of x lies in the range from 0 to pi inclusive. By 0 to pi, we are referring to it as the first two quadrants. So by the first two quadrants, 0 to pi over 2 to pi. So in the first quadrant, all trigonal functions including cosine are positive. In the second quadrant, only signs are positive, cosine must be a negative, and that answers this question because cosine is a negative. That means to say the corresponding angle for this is actually in the second quadrant. We can draw our basic angle alpha here by your Tuacaso methods here. Your root tree, which refers to adjacent, is on the negative x axis, and your hypotenuse will be on your radius here, which is a 2. So that means to say that we can then find our basic angle using the second quadrant. By that, we refer to it as basic angle alpha, will therefore be cosine inverse of root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2 is indeed the result of a special angle. And that special angle is known to be a pi over 6. Pi over 6 also known as 30 degrees. Since the question wants us to live in radians as a multiple of pi, the alpha must be a pi over 6. So for the second quadrant angle, where alpha is a pi over 6, to describe this angle, we therefore take a pi minus away alpha like this. So pi minus away alpha shall give us pi minus away pi over 6. And that will mean that the final answer of this will shall be 5 pi over 6. So the principal value of cosine inverse of negative root 3 over 2 shall be a 5 pi over 6. And that is a part A answer. In part B of this question, without using a calculator, express cosine 7 pi over 12 in the form of root A minus root B over C, where A, B, and C are integers. So over here, cosine 7 pi over 12, the angle of 7 pi over 12 is actually made out of two special angles, addition of two special angles. So before we go straight into the solution, we might want to revise on the addition angle formula for cosine. So by the addition angle formula for cosine, we have this part. Addition angle formula, in this case, cosine of a plus b brackets will therefore give us cos a cos b minus away sine a sine b. So with this in mind, we can therefore continue with this question of cosine 7 pi over 12. The angle of 7 pi over 12 can be split into pi over 3 plus pi over 4. So pi over 3 is 1 third, 1 third plus a quarter shall give us a 7 over 12, 7 pi over 12. So using the yellow color as angle A and the blue color as angle B. 
cosine a plus b will therefore be cosine a cosine b minus away sine a sine b that means cosine pi over 3 cosine pi over 4 minus away sine pi over 3 sine pi over 4 take note that pi over 3 is a special angle and so is pi over 4 so evaluating this with our special angles in this case shall give us this cosine pi over 3 is the same as 1 over 2 cosine pi over 4 is the same as 1 over root 2 sine pi over 3 is the same as root 3 over 2 and sine pi over 4 is the same as 1 over root 2 so you are to express in terms of sets because these are the result of special angles so multiplying throughout shall give us this answer so over here you have a 1 minus away root 3 over 2 root 2 so over here there is a set in the denominator so this cannot be the answer because we need to rationalize the denominator so to rationalize the denominator we multiply by the set in this case the root 2 to both the numerator as well as the denominator like this so this is your rationalizing of your denominator and with that we can have our final answer to be this so over here root 2 multiplied by 1 shall give us a root 2 root 2 multiplied by a negative root 3 shall give us a negative root 6 2 root 2 multiplied by root 2 shall give us a 4 so the answer for this question root 2 minus root 6 divided by 4 and that is the answer for part b in part c of this questions angle a and b both lie in between 0 and 360 degrees that means to say it can be all four quadrants so with that let's get our quadrant diagram out in this case so our quadrant diagram astc given that sine a and cos b are both negative so sine a when it is a negative it belongs to both the third and the fourth quadrants so sine a when it is a negative it belongs to the third and fourth quadrant like this so that means to say a will be in the range from in this case 180 to 360 so a will be in the range of 180 to 360 like this cosine b is a negative when cosine is a negative it refers to the second quadrant and the third quadrants so by the second quadrant and the third quadrants i'm referring to here where cosine is a negative so therefore b must be in the range from in this case 90 all the way to 270 so from 90 to 270 not inclusive so the sum here which is the a plus b in this case so all we need to do is to just add up 180 degrees to a 90 degrees so the left side of this inequality add it up shall give us the answer like this so a plus b shall be in the range of 180 degrees plus 90 degrees actually give us a 270 and on the right sides of this inequality 360 plus 270 actually give us a 630 that means to say i would disagree with this statement saying that a plus b is actually in the range of 270 to 630 not inclusive and that is the answer for part c moving on to the last part of this question in part d we are given a triangle of xyz within this triangle of xyz we have two smaller right angle triangles in this case the first right angle triangle will be x w y at the same time the other one will consist of x w z so in the first right angle triangle over here we can tell that 3 cm is actually the side that is opposite this angle and h is the adjacent of this angle a for triangle x w z we can tell that opposite of 2 cm all right this side of 2 cm is actually the opposite of angle b and h is actually once again the adjacent of this triangle so we know that in our tua castle which is tangent equals to opposite over adjacent we need to apply uh, tua castle for these two small right angle triangles at the same time we are also told the a plus b is a 45 knowing that tangent 45 is a special result of once we will need to use our tangent addition formula so by tangent addition formula I'm referring to this part here the tangent addition formula gives us a tangent a plus b to be equals to the numerator in this case to be a tangent a plus tangent b the denominator to be a 1 minus away tangent a tangent b so moving on to our tua castle which is a tangent theta to be equal to opposite over adjacent with these two formula in place we can then start to do this question consider this right angle triangle of x y w 
So by x, y, w, opposites will be our y, w. Tangent A is our tangent A, will therefore be equivalent to opposite is our y, w, which is the 3cm, and adjacent, which is our x, w, which is the h. So O over A, 3 over H for tangent A. Similarly, for tangent B, opposite will be our WZ, which is the 2CM, and adjacent will be our XW, which is a H. So O over A, tangent equals to O over A, once again, 2 over H, like this. So once we have our tangent A to be 3 over H and tangent B to be 2 over H, we are also told that A plus B in this case, A plus B to be a 45. We, not, we might want to use the tangent addition formula right now. So for tangent addition formula, let's use it. In this case, tangent of A plus B is the same as tangent 45. We clearly know that tangent 45 is a 1. And at the same time, on the left side of this equation, we can plug in the formula and replace the tangent in A's and tangent B's respectively into it. So over here, we have the next step like this. So tangent A plus tangent B is the same as tangent A, which is 3 over H, tangent B, which is 2 over H, over 1 minus away tangent A, which is 3 over H, and tangent B, which is 2 over H. Tangent 45 is actually a special angle, giving us a result of 1. Moving on to the next step, after replacing, we therefore have it like this. So 3 over H plus 2 over H, divided by 1 minus away 3 over H times 2 over H, that is by substituting both the yellow color tangent A and the blue color tangent B. And on the right side, it still remains to be a 1. Manipulating this equation shall give us h squared minus 5h minus 6. And doing a cross factorization shall give us h minus 6 times h plus 1 equals to 0. And evaluating h shall give us a 6 or a negative 1. Since h is considered to be a length of xw, it cannot be a negative. As a result, the only answer for this question in part D is a 6. And that's the answer for this question. I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.